Hey friends, welcome to Friday. Yeah, you, you, I'm glad you woke up this morning. You're happy, I'm happy. Let's talk about stuff, like where you should get stuff, like dope metal prints, displate.com forward slash UFD tech official. Do it, coupon code UFD, 15% off. You know you want to. Amazing metal prints, great selection, awesome stuff, great decoration. Good ad spot, Brent. I'm proud of you. So let's talk about Intel. Today's a more like Intel flavored version of hot news, talking about all the stuff that Team Blue has going on behind the scenes and the latest report out of their GPU division is that they're adding a feature that AMD and Nvidia still haven't done. And this is apparently because of the ask you anything that they did on Reddit a couple months ago where they asked the community, what would you like to see with our graphics department? What would you like to see with our GPUs? And this was one of the main ones that came up, especially thanks to retro gamers. So the feature that Intel GPUs are going to be adding into their system is known as integer scalings. This allows for retro games to be scaled up pretty decently so that you can play them at modern resolutions with that, without that much of image quality lost. That was a weird way of phrasing it. That's the main purpose behind it. Intel has stated that this feature will only be available in Gen 11 graphics and later. So that's the new ones that are coming out with uh, such as Ice Lake and their 10th generation CPUs. And then obviously Project Z, which is supposed to be Gen 12 graphics will support integer scaling as well. But it seems that Intel is actually trying to appease the people with their GPU department and uh, creating a setup that is really good. So it's unclear at this point whether or not the integer scaling is real integer scaling or nearest neighbor integer scaling, which they would have different results for uh, upscaling resolution on older video games, depending on how it's actually done. But for the most part, it would allow people to play things such as their NES games at higher resolution and still not have it look like a giant blurry mess. So it's gonna be really good for upscaling things that happen to be down resolution from the previous stuff and Intel appears to be listening. So they're making really good strides on the GPU department. They're hiring a lot of good people. Like I'm, I'm actually excited for Intel GPUs, like especially Project Z next year. What do you guys think? Are you excited for it? Is this something that you're anticipating? Does it look like Intel's actually gonna be properly competing? I'm curious to hear from you down below in the comments. But while Intel's GPU division seems to be making strides for consumer satisfaction, the CPU side, um, well, let's just say they, they're, uh, they're, they've got more hot biscuits than a dog track, I'll tell you that. I don't know what that means, but it's true. So Intel actually has an internal memo going around that states that they actually really respect AMD's progress. Like they, they view them as a legitimate competitor. Apparently it's an internal memo called Circuit News and the post is called AMD Competitive Profile. Where we go toe to toe, why they are resurgent, which chips of ours beat theirs. So the fact that they even have to talk about that is a huge change from just a few years ago where it would have been like which chips of theirs can even maybe come close to ours in value but not really performance. So the fact that they're doing it in the other way around shows a lot of development on AMD side and Intel is taking note. They're, uh, they're letting their employees know about it. The entire world already knows about it. AMD's market share is up quite significantly. We've had sales reports from retailers come out over the past few months showing that it's a basically either 50-50 or a two to one split of AMD CPUs to Intel CPUs depending on where you're buying them. And of course with Ryzen 3000 launching in just about a week, it would likely be even worse for Intel's bottom line because AMD is just going to continue to wreck in that department. Obviously, Intel has a lot more business than just consumer gaming desktop CPUs, so this isn't gonna hurt them too much as a company overall, but it obviously uh, is enough that they need to take note of it and you know, put give praise where praise is due. They give them props to AMD. Thank you, Intel. And then let's talk about Intel putting stuff on things which is putting an Ice Lake CPU on an M.2 stick and creating a neural accelerator, which is actually kind of cool. So this is a full, basically, Ice Lake processor that is on, as I said, an M.2 port. You plug it in and then it will allow you to do AI acceleration with this M.2 stick, which is kind of cool, especially for anybody who has a modern computer system and somehow needs to do some sort of neural network uh, machine learning AI processing stuff. And they don't want to fork out the money for, let's say, uh, 
uh, RTX super graphics card that happens to have tensor cores. Getting a little M.2 stick can allow for uh, the ability to just kind of have a more portable solution for that. You could even put this in a laptop, which would be quite good. So Intel is calling these the Nirvana NNPI, which is fantastic. That's a great name, I love it. Intel has said that the TDP of these little M.2 sticks will have a TDP close to uh, what ICE-like processors are, so the top of the range getting close to 30 watts. Even though M.2's interface is 15 watts, you can apparently connect it with other cards to create a higher bandwidth situation. So Intel is going pretty deep on the neural network stuff. Uh, the Nirvana processors seem to be something that's pretty cool and something that could help people do neural network training or do something that's gonna ruin the world forever. Ever, like make moving videos that aren't real. But then let's talk about something else that Intel hasn't been succeeding at, which is uh, cell phone development. Their 5G stuff kind of sucked and Apple was like, okay, we're going to go back to Qualcomm now, leave us alone. Well, apparently Intel is just like, yeah, let's just, let's just move on from this. They're apparently putting a portfolio of around 8,200 cell phone technology patents out on the open market for auction to see what kind of cash they can get for it. It seems like they're just gonna be exiting this space as gracefully as they can, selling off the IP that they might have and just moving on from a failed venture. And especially with new management, CEO Bob Swan, instead of the previous CEO who got fired for reasons, resigned, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it seems like they actually are trying to double down on their strengths, uh, try to fix anything that might be slightly damaged, such as their CPU department, and kind of just uh, remove their weaknesses. So it seems like it might be an okay strategy for them. But let's talk about other strategies, such as in the gaming area and Google Stadia. You, did you think Intel and Google had a beef? Oh, you didn't? Okay, well, apparently it's enough of a beef that Intel's director of business development for games and esports had to come out and make a statement saying he is not um, quote unquote quaking in my shoes about Stadia. Fantastic. Obviously, the main competitor to Google Stadia would be gaming PCs, of which Intel is a portion about it uh, of it, and AMD is already subsidizing Google Stadia, so they're getting the revenue of that, and then you have Intel PCs. I really don't think Google Stadia is a main competitor to Intel. I think AMD is more of that, but they're not worried about Google Stadia, and neither should you be. But we have a couple more things to talk about, which is the fact that Microsoft is apparently looking to expand their portfolio of CPUs for their Surface devices, not really wanting to be super reliant on Intel for that. Apparently they have prototypes in development using AMD's Picasso, Picasso APUs, which would be good for AMD's bottom line, but then also potentially even coming out with Surface devices using Qualcomm chips, which would be a huge departure from their Intel only lineup that they've had for quite some time. But in, or Microsoft is not the only company looking to depart from an exclusive Intel lineup. Apple is also looking to do that. There's been rumors around this for quite some time that they're not only looking to create their own processors and SOCs for iPhones and iPads, but they're also looking to expand into that for their next gen MacBook lineups, whether that be 2021 and beyond. They're working on it and they just hired one of ARM's top chip designers, Mike Filippo, Filippo, he was a chip architect at ARM and AIM, or Apple has acquired them to potentially help them with them developing their next generation of CPUs, GPUs, SOCs, whatever they're gonna put on their actual MacBook devices and Intel's bottom line hurting even more because of it. And you know who else's bottom line hurts? Mine from sitting in this couch because we're done with hot news. Thank you everybody for watching this episode. It is Friday, Friday. Got to get down on Friday. And that's where I'm going to end this episode by reminding you to pick up displates, displate.com forward slash UFD tech official. They're amazing dope metal prints. They have everything on it that you could want. You should really check them out. Coupon code UFD for 15% off. Uh, let me know what you're doing this weekend down below in the comments. We have a couple more episodes of hot news coming out tomorrow and Sunday. So be sure to get subscribed for that. Also hit the like button on this video to let the YouTube algorithm robots know that you love me because I love you too. And I'm Brett with the Hot News Channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see your smiling faces again in the next video. My mohawk is flat. Love you too. Bye.